We had the comic sales data come in from May of 2022, and somehow things have gotten even more bleak and worse for DC Comics. For the most part, Batman has been a steady seller, and that remains the case. But even some of their recent short-term decisions regarding sales and trying to spike numbers have absolutely backfired on DC Comics. They've actually tanked the sales on one of their perennial bestsellers. It's absolutely shocking what they've been able to do. I'm also going to go in and look at some of the graphic novel sales numbers through comic book shops. This isn't going to be through uh, through book chains or anything like that. And it really amplifies that there's a lack of quality at DC Comics that people really aren't interested in a lot of what DC are putting out right now. They just don't think there's a lot of good stuff out there. And DC Comics are in a world of hurt. They better hope and pray that Dark Crisis returns some type of enthusiasm, some type of trust from their consumer base that they'll actually come back in and maybe try out a character other than Batman. It does not look promising. And when I go through these numbers, you're going to be shocked. I've also found another website that breaks down the numbers even further and really amplifies. If you haven't believed me that DC Comics have destroyed sales on every character for Batman, you're going to know it after this one. This thing was absolutely staggering when I saw it. Your jaw is going to drop when you see this, so make sure you stick around for that. First up, let's look at the comic book sales for May of 2022. And this is a limited sample size of comic book sales. This is point of sales from shops using Comic Hub, which is only like 100 shops worldwide contributing to this data. These numbers are not perfect, but these are the best numbers that we do have coming from comic book shops. So this is what we're going to work with. What's interesting to note, and this isn't a DC thing, but I thought it was very strange. I think it's the first time this has ever happened in comic book history. Amazing Spider-Man number one was the number one selling comic book in both April and May of 2022. That portends good things in the future as long as that Amazing Spider-Man run from Zeb Wells can deliver some quality. Now let's get to the bad news. Let's talk about DC Comics. Every Marvel comic that sold better than Batman was a number one issue. And that is very good news for DC Comics and Batman. Now one gamble, and I have to point this out, that I do think worked out in DC Comics' favor. Flashpoint Beyond number zero was overshipped and had lots of returnability to spike up the number of copies available to customers. And it appears that the sales have stayed. Flashpoint Beyond number one from Jeff Johns, Jeremy Adams, Tim Sheridan, remains in the top 10. That is a very good sign. The next thing that we'll see from DC Comics is Jurassic League number one. This is that strange Daniel Warren Johnson comic book where essentially it's the Justice League, but with dinosaurs. It's a fun comic book, Juan Gideon on it. We'll see if this has any staying power. Batman Superman World's Finest is the best comic book you'll find at DC or Marvel right now. Firmly entrenched in the top 20. Batman Killing Time number three. This is probably the best work from Tom King since Swamp Thing, the Winter Special. Hopefully he can actually stick the landing this time. Then we get Shadow War Warzone. Josh Williamson Shadow War crossover event between Batman, Deathstroke, Inc. and Robin. Then we have Batman Beyond the White Knight number three. Nightwing 92. Really, this is the only comic book not starring Batman. That is in the top 50, not shocking, but he is a Batman-related character. You will not see anything else in this top 50 list that doesn't have Batman featured on it. Justice League 75, this comic book actually debuted the month prior. Obviously, there was a lot of interest in the death of the Justice League, and the sales maintained through May of 2022. And finally, rounding up DC Comics entries into the top 50 is Batman Beyond, Neo Year number 2. I'm wondering, did you all notice what was missing? A perennial top 50 comic book. They've already destroyed Superman. They've already destroyed action comics. They've already destroyed Flash. Did you notice the legacy comic book that is always in the top 50 that is no longer there? Detective fucking comics. Somehow DC comics with their decades of experience and marketing to their audience have turned people off to detective comics. One of the comic book series that collectors love. They want to keep their detective comics ongoing collection ongoing. Yet they have managed to talk collectors and readers out of continuing to support detective comics. What happened? They gave Marinko Tamaki a 12 issue weekly comic book event called Shadows of the Bat. And what was it? absolutely terrible there's no way anybody at dc comics could have looked at shadows of the bat read the synopsis and saw how this was going to play out and said you know what this is so fucking good we can't release it over six months we can't release it over a year this must go out in a three-month period that book sucked so bad people stopped reading detective comics and i don't blame them Marinko tamaki was doing 
perfectly adequate before then. Then we got it in that event book, and it was trash. Everyone noticed it, and not shockingly, DC Comics customers called their bluff and he said, you know what? Now that you've overcharged me for this stupid event that I never asked for with this creator that wasn't ready for it, I am going to step back and stop reading Detective Comics. I wish I could call this shocking on the part of DC Comics, but they've made so many stupid short-term decisions, cash grabs that have blown up in their faces time and time again, and they keep doing it, and it's only going to get worse. Now let's look at the graphic novel sales. There's some interesting stuff to glean here, although this is slightly misleading, and I'll explain that here in a second. When we look at the graphic novel sales from May of 2022 through comic book shops, what you'll notice is there are only two DC comics in the top 20 for the units shipped list. I decided to include both because there's only one on the dollar sold list. That's even worse. Typically, DC Comics molly wops Marvel when it comes to graphic novels. Marvel has traditionally outsold DC Comics when it comes to floppies, but DC has always dominated Marvel when it comes to graphic novels. But DC Comics aren't delivering a lot of quality, and the only thing people are interested in are non-superhero books, at least the new stuff that DC Comics are putting out. Here you can see Sandman Volume 1, as well as Nice House on the Lake Volume 1. Wouldn't it be great right now if DC Comics had, I don't know, an alternative label where they could put these stories that maybe weren't really superhero related, but they were cool comic book stories and they could keep them in the DC Comics family. I don't know, with something, I would call it Vertigo. I would call it Vertigo. I think that's a good name. Oh wait, DC Comics had that and they destroyed it two and a half, three years ago. When we look at the graphic novels by dollars list, you only have Sandman number one. So DC Comics didn't even put out a collection or an omnibus that really penetrated the audience. Now this is slightly misleading. I will give you that because if you look at like the top 100 graphic novel sales through comic shops, DC still has the most sold, but we're seeing significantly less interest in DC Comics graphic novels. I already highlighted that when I looked at the 2021 graphic novel sales through book chains where DC Comics almost all of a sudden just fell off the map and it's starting to happen in comic book shops as well. Now, if you don't believe me that DC Comics is, is having problems, and all of you have, I've heard it before, well, maybe they're just really kicking ass and taking names at 50 through 100. And certainly there are some DC Comics in there. You're going to see Superman, Son of Kyle and stuff. But once I break this down, you guys are going to be shocked. I found this site called comicbookrevolution.com. Every month they do their own sales analysis, and they break everything down into the top 200 if you want a really good comic book sales breakdown, as far as the comic hub numbers, I suggest going to Comic Book Revolution. And I will say this, these numbers are from April of 2022, so they're the month prior, but they do highlight and really illustrate what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, they haven't released their May of 2022 sales charts. First, let's look at the Batman family of comic books. There's some really interesting stuff here. There you see Detective Comics 1059 at number 68. Perennial top 20 selling comic book obviously drifted out of the top 20 when Mariko Tamaki took over and after her event dropped it all the way out of the top 50. And there's some really interesting stuff when you start looking outside like the top 75. Catwoman just had a new writer come on, Tinny Howard. Everyone's told it's great. No one's buying it. I am Batman. Everybody wanted John Ridley's take on Batman. Jay's Fox goes to New York City completely DOA. Batgirls number five, that team up book from Clunrad, Michael Conrad, Becky Cluded, the hottest riding duo at all of DC Comics, absolutely dead. Harley Quinn number 14, number 124. This is absolutely insane. Yet they continuously give Stephanie Phillips opportunities at DC Comics and they treat her like she's a future superstar. But the sales don't back it up. And what's the next big mistake DC Comics are doing coming up in what, August of 2022? Harley Quinn is going weekly for a month to tell this big story that Stephanie Phillips came up with. She can't jump Harley Quinn into the top 100 sales, yet they're giving her a weekly book and they're going to let yet another creator absolutely fall on their ass because they don't have the talent and they aren't prepared for a story like this. Stephanie Phillips has been on Harley Quinn for quite some time, since the very beginning of Future State, and the title is an absolute flop. People don't like her take on Harley Quinn. I don't like her take on Harley Quinn, yet DC Comics are giving her an event book. Yet it gets worse when we look at the other characters not associated with Batman. When you see this Justice League stuff, you are going to be shocked. The Superman franchise is completely DOA. 
The only comic book featuring Superman in the top 50 also stars Batman, Batman Superman World's Finest. Thankfully, that's an actually good book. Superman Son of Kal-El, despite having worldwide exposure just a few months ago for the coming out party for John Kent is an absolute flop. The main Superman title is a perennial top 20, top 25 seller. People have absolutely lost confidence and faith in DC Comics' ability to deliver Superman stories. Action Comics, another perennial top 50 seller, down at number 95. And the worst part is, Action Comics, under Philip Kennedy Johnson with this War World saga, is good. A lot of critics out there have praised what Philip Kennedy Johnson is doing with Superman in War World. Guess what? People don't care. They have lost faith in DC Comics, and it doesn't matter in their mind what Philip Kennedy Johnson does. They know that DC Comics are going to screw it up in the end anyway. Over on Wonder Woman, in April of 2022, they were finishing up Trial of the Amazons. Look at those numbers. Number 89, Trial of the Amazons, Wonder Girl number two. The Wonder Woman book is at number 91. That's a Trial of the Amazons tie-in. And then finally, the final issue, the final chapter of Trial of the Amazons, Number 115, absolutely disgraceful. And what did we get after this? The Nubia Coronation Special, as well as Nubia Queen of the Amazons. It doesn't matter how hard B. Diallo and Stephanie Williams fail. They will consistently get opportunities, even though no one is reading their books. Absolutely disgraceful. Nobody wants to read Wonder Woman. What isn't shocking are those sales numbers. B. Diallo, Stephanie Williams, Michael Conrad, Becky Cloonan, Joelle Jones on an event book. How could it fail? How could it fucking not fail? Of course it did. And then we go and look at the Justice League franchise. Obviously, Justice League 75 did well in April. It was a number four selling book. That is the death of the Justice League. Flash was a perennial top 20 seller under Josh Williams said before Tom King destroyed Wally West with Heroes in Crisis. It's crashed all the way down to number 85. And the worst part is Jeremy Adams is an up and coming talent. He has potential. That's a good story. Unfortunately for him, it's a Wally West story. And Wally West fans don't trust DC Comics anymore. And you can't blame them. Look at Green Lantern coming in at 99, barely sneaking inside the top 100. Number 12, the end of Jeff Thorne's run. One of the biggest bait and switch bullshit comic runs I've ever read in my life. Naomi season two, number two. This is the new big character for Brian Michael Bendis. Everyone likes Naomi, right? No. This comic book isn't selling on issue number fucking two. It's absolutely disgraceful. And look at Aquaman number three. No wonder that comic book got the act so fast. Barely sneaking inside the top 200. DC Comics has absolutely destroyed every character outside of Batman within their universe. The final thing I want to show you from Comic Book Revolution is their dead titles walking. This is a bit misleading, but I'll explain why. Any Marvel or DC title outside the top 100, which typically sells under 30,000 units, is put onto this list. Normally, Marvel Comics list is much bigger, like the same size as DC Comics, but the month prior, a lot of their titles outside the top 100 had actually concluded, and the ones that were remaining, most of them actually didn't ship in April of 2022. So this list typically would be bigger for Marvel, but you look at the DC Comics list. I've been telling you nobody reads Batman Urban Legends. There's the proof. Once again, Naomi Season 2 at 149. Teen Titans Academy has somehow drifted down to 155. Teen Titans, one of the best-selling superhero teams in all of comic books, has absolutely been destroyed. Tim Sheridan was an absolute hack. We called it from day one. He killed sales, and yet they continued to publish the book until issue number 15. Absolutely shocking to see Teen Titans this low on the list. Unfortunately, there are a couple of good books on this list that I definitely would recommend, and I hate seeing them this low particularly at number 128, DC versus Vampires, from James Tynan and Matt Rosenberg. I think that's an actual really fun story. I imagine DC Comics thought it could be like the next deceased that apparently has not happened. And Rogues number two from Josh Williamson, that is a really cool story, but nobody trusts DC Comics anymore. And Josh Williamson just isn't the brand name that DC Comics thinks that he is. That's why putting him as like the marquee name on Dark Crisis is really a big gamble. They're gambling that DC Comics in Crisis will sell on its own because Joshua Williamson, as much as I like him, and I do think he's a competent and sometimes a great comic book writer, he is not a name value. He does not put butts in the seats when it comes to comic book readers. They don't really have anybody, you know, outside of maybe Tom King, Jeff Johns right now. 
all their marquee names have you know exited the building. They are in serious fucking trouble. If you don't believe me, I just showed you all the evidence. DC Comics are in for a world of hurt, and it's their own fault. I just talked about this with my good friend Josh. We broke down how DC Comics essentially destroyed all their characters outside of Batman. We go through every single one of them. We talk about DC Comics' creative decisions that sunk Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash, all of them. Definitely check this out if you want some more information on why their numbers are so terrible.